So the first thing in regards to the velocity banking concept, the fundamentals for those that are obviously brand new, velocity banking is simply the debt snowball concept on steroids. You know, call it debt snowball 2.0, whatever you want to name it. The idea behind velocity banking is being able to use debt to pay off debt, use debt to leverage debt, to invest and make money. One of the two is really what it boils down to. So we're either using debt to pay off debt. We're borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. When I borrow from Peter, I get charged a very low cost of borrowing. In many cases, zero cost of borrowing called offsetting. We are offsetting our borrowing costs by simply paying off a debt that is costing me monthly cash flow and a higher interest rate is the general idea. And what velocity banking does is simply accelerates the speed and direction at which you pay off debt, right? Uh, so we are increasing speed in a particular direction in regards to, in many cases that I deal with, it has to do with paying off debt, more specifically paying off bad debt that is hindering cash flow, costing us a lot of uh, uh, interest so that we can position ourselves to eventually 10x our lifestyle is the end game. The end game is to 10x, in my opinion, which simply means to go from whatever you're making today and just multiply it by 10. If you do that at least once in your life, I can almost guarantee you with 100% conviction, I personally believe that over 90% of your mon money problems would get solved if you just went from what you're making today and just multiply it by 10, right? Uh, and to give you an example, for me personally, when I first started on my 10x journey, I was initially making 2000 a month. My expenses were 1500 bucks. My debt was just under 30K. And my cash flow was 500 bucks. I went just like this, times that number by 10. Within about a year, I was roughly making 20000 a month on average. And I just kept the same system. So when I 10x, I said, well, why not 10x again, right? So you can do it as many times as you want. I think doing it at least one time will drastically shift your positioning, your thought process of how you view money, which is just a resource at the end of the day. And so 20,000 20, a month times that by 10, it's now 2021, I'm averaging now roughly 35k a month and you know i really can't complain i've been blessed by the holy spirit i feel sometimes anointed i feel favored i've got jesus as my witness god as my judgment father and you know really just aligning with his will for my life you know completely surrendering what i think i know about money and uh surrendering to a, a much bigger cause you know having 35,000 a month on average income coming in really allows me to think big. When I was making 2000 a month, I was thinking small. But then I just simply decided to 10x, go to 20K, and then not really look back, continue to increase that number. So my cash flow goes from 500 and uh, 2021, you know, I'm roughly cash flowing almost 15K a month, you know, roughly, sometimes more than that. You know, especially if I have a big month, like if I if I make a 40K month, 50K month, obviously the number goes up because it's just pure profit at that point. Um, and I'm completely debt free. So I don't owe anybody anything, right? I don't owe any debt, but I do own debt. So I own debt, I don't owe debt, and I debt leverage. And what that simply means is I became Peter that lends to Paul right? That's essentially what I've done in my life. And there's a, there's a particular scripture that talks about how we can lend to many nations, right? And technically speaking, a nation 
when you go to the root of it, started by a group of people, right? So nations are people. More specifically, I can refer to a nation as your household, the Rodriguez family, the, the Eddie family, you know, uh, the Cruz family, the Selvin family, the, the, the Johnny uh, family, the Stella family, right? I just simply figure out a way to go from owing to owning. I've replaced the E, put it with an N. I now own debt that pays me money, right? And so what velocity banking allows us to really do is position us for big think, for big thinking. Whereas these traditional methods that maybe you were born into or taught really doesn't create a world where we can think big. You know, like I've been, I've been taught to uh, get a job, go to college, save your money, max fund your 401k for, for retirement, and have a Roth, and have an emergency fund, and save and scrimp and scrap and preserve, and you know, when you're 65 years old, when you're 59 years old, you'll be happily ever after. I've been told to not talk to strangers. You know, I've been told that a penny saved is a penny earned, uh, when in reality, uh, a, a penny is a penny. In fact, it's less than a penny, right? It's, it's terrible. So these traditional views of money provided by, say, the system that we live under, when you look at the stats of, say, the average American that followed all of those steps, I have still yet to meet a client that is over the age of 55 that can honestly tell me that they are in love with their 401k plan, their pension plan, their social security. They're set by IRA. They're, I, I have not met one individual yet. That is the promoted uh, language. That's the promoted advice that we typically get, right? So as traditional and safe as it is, does it really provide the happiness and just forget about the happiness for a second. Does it logically provide the resources that I need to succeed in the 21st century? Can we honestly, you know, answer that question? And is it possible to cut a 40 year timeline into about five to seven years to create a life worth living for more than just the last fourth quarter of my life. You know, I would like to live a life worth living in the first quarter, the second quarter, the third quarter, and the fourth, right? And so if I stick to traditional, I don't know, based on stats, statistics, historical data, I don't know if that can guarantee me happiness, a life worth living, financial freedom in that time frame, that whatever it is, 30, 40 years. So I don't say none of that to be against it. To provide full transparency, I still do all of the traditional moves because at the end of the day, they're fundamental. The only thing that I do is I add a little thing that I call 10x, where I multiply over grow. I choose to multiply my dollars as opposed to growing my dollars. So if you have a dollar and I have a dollar, you put your dollar in a location where you're going to get a 10% rate of return. So you're going to earn 10 cents in the first year. You'll have a dollar and 10 cents. The second year, you put in another dollar you're gonna earn, what is it? I don't know, another 20, per, another, so 10% on top of the dollar 10, right? The original principal, the dollar, you add another dollar, you have two dollars of principal, you have your 10 cents, your return from the first year, and now you're gonna earn 10% on $2.10, whatever that number is. And then you start to compound 
over a period of time. Whereas me, I take that dollar and I say times 10 in the first year, and now I have $10 at the end of the year while you have a measly 10 cents, which by the way, you're gonna get taxed at, uh, I don't know, 30, 40%, depending on the political environment that we're in. So you got 10 cents, I got $10. Second year, a dollar plus 10, I now have 11. I take that 11, I put in another dollar, let's just say, keep it so simple, 12. 12 times 10, $120. It's only a matter of time, right? Before I multiply a hell of a lot faster than you compound. Again, I say this not to go against compounding because at the end of the day, I compound my money too. I have the Roth, I have the HSA, I've got the Bitcoin, the Ethereum, I've got the the, uh, uh, the, the, oh my God, the investment accounts, you know, the brokerage accounts where I'm buying the stocks, the dividends, the index, the cash value life insurance policy. I'm doing all of that. That's where I store the money that I multiplied and I do everything you're doing as well. Scrimp and scrap and cutting back. I do all of that too. Frugal. I drive a 2017 Hyundai Tucson. It's 2021. I do not have a payment on it. My insurance cost is pretty low, right? So I drive a 2017 vehicle in 2021, right? Instead of buying a G-Wagon, instead of buying a Mercedes, instead of buying a Lexus, a BMW. I redirect cash flow. I recapture transactional costs through debt leveraging, credit cards, cryptocurrencies, blockchain, investing, right? We can go all day with this. So all I wanna do is add to what you're already doing by simply putting an X and a 10 times 10. That's it. Think big. We're gonna solve a lot of things in this lifetime, my friend.